I know some of y'all are looking at this title and reading it saying, this reads as if it's a soap opera. Trust me when I tell you that it is not a soap opera. It is entirely far from it. And thank God it is. And the part that made me really want to go in on the story was the last part of this um, title. But I'm going to get to that in a second. But let's start with the good part of the story. And that is the hero part. Shout out and a huge shout out to Ali Bracey. Um, I actually heard about this story on Instagram before I actually got an article tagged to me about the actual full story itself. So this man lives with his girlfriend, whose name is Tina Burton. And, you know, they li- they live with their daughter in Kentucky and they just moved there. And, you know, they I guess, you know, start a new life, you know, do whatever it is that they have to do. Then all of a sudden and now we're getting ready to transition into the perv part of the story enters this guy whose name is donald oliver now i told you this family just moved in to that area for and been there for two weeks this guy must have been scoping them out since the minute that they started moving there because he must have had some like some heavy eyes on one particular person in that house not ollie bracy not his girlfriend but the other person in the residence being their daughter Yes, this guy is a straight up and down perv. So two weeks have gone by. The family is all moved in. Then one night while they're sleeping nice in their beds and whatnot. This Donald Oliver character takes it upon himself to climb through the window of this girl's bedroom and proceeds to start undressing himself. Now, the girl wakes up because she most likely hears something, but she doesn't make her presence be known. So she goes back under and good thing she had her phone near her. So she gets her phone and she texts her mother early in the morning and says that there's a strange man in her bedroom and he's undressing himself. That's when the girlfriend alerts the boyfriend, Ali Bracey. He grabs his gun. He goes into the room and he shoots Donald Oliver six times times now you would think that he would have died from at least one of those shots but he probably didn't want to shoot too erratically because of two things one it's dark in there and two the daughter's in there he probably didn't want to miss and hit her or have any fragments come and fall upon her now this guy like i said he literally broke into the room and started undressing himself one of the questions that the mother had asked was, what were, her in- what, what were his intentions? I think it's pretty obvious. He was going to come in there and he's probably going to try to rape their daughter. But good thing that dad was quick on his feet, grabbed that gun and fired on his ass. Too bad he didn't kill him. Because Donald Oliver, unfortunately, is still very much alive. But he's most likely going to go through a trial. And they said that he's um, being held on a $50,000 bond and he's due back in court on the 25th. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get to the propaganda part right here, which leads us to this image. So this was the uh, article I was tagged in the Free Thought Project. And when they were talking about the story, they put up a picture of this white man with his white wife and their white child. And it looks like an image that came straight out of a movie. It looked very, uh, how can I say, staged. They would have you to believe that it was a white person who was behind, who was not behind, but who was the savior in this entire ordeal. When that clearly was not even the case. It was a black man. See, like I said, we can't even be the heroes in our own narratives. Our own real life narratives. They had to somehow find a way to whitewash this whole thing. This part right here probably pisses me off more than anything else in the whole damn story. Well, slightly. But that's how lamestream media gets down. Like Professor Black Truth always say, he says that uh, pro- uh, that uh, the media is the propaganda arm of white supremacy. And this right here proves it. And this came from the Free Thought Project, an online site. They couldn't use if they didn't couldn't find the image to use. They didn't have to use an image at all. Why use this one to push the narrative? They don't even have a picture of the of Ali Bracy anywhere in the article. None. 
They mention his name, but they don't have a picture, but they want to use a picture of a white family. That's clearly a picture that looks like it came straight off, straight off of a television set or a movie set. But I, that propaganda arm works like a charm every single time. But that's really all I had to say as, uh, as it pertains to this particular story right here. Y'all let me know what you think about this down in the comments. Shout out to Ali Bracey for, you know, coming, you know, coming to his daughter's defense, you know, um, very quickly. Unfortunately, he couldn't take out the devil, but, you know, he did what he could do. And y'all, um, I will talk to you in the next one.